The following story has been brought to you by storiestoinspire.org. So one of the first crazy bris stories I had, I was in Dallas and the Jewish Community Center had this amazing program. Some people probably wouldn't approve of it, but every rabbi, rav, teacher taught a class on Thursday nights. It was called the Joys of Jewish Learning. And uh, I was asked to teach. He had from, yeah, we don't really have Haredim, but you know, we have Yeshivish and all the way to the far left. And so I was teaching a course on the joys of, of the Jewish life cycle. And the first week was bris and baby namings. So there was a knock at the door. This woman says, my reform rabbi didn't show up. Can I sit in on your class? Sure. So I had about like 60 people there. And I'm teaching about Mila and namings. So after the class, people ask their questions, they leave, and I see her sitting in the back, and she's just like crying. She comes up to me and says, can I ask you a question? And I said, sure. She says, why is God punishing me? I said, punishing you? She says, yeah, I've been married for five years. I can't have a child. I ha keep having miscarriages. What did I do that God is punishing me? So I said, first of all, how do you know God is punishing you? You know, I was much more soft than that, but like, are you a prophet? So we started talking. It's better than saying because you're evil. Right, right, right. That, I, that, that has never worked. That has never worked. Well, I think it's pretty obvious. So anyway, so, so we started talking. They threw us out of the building. It's midnight. We're on the parking lot. And we're just talking about life and, and so on and so forth. And she says, is there anything the Torah says about being able to have children? So I said, yeah. I said a few things. Do you light Shabbos candles? No. I said, so maybe start lighting Shabbos candles. You find out when sunset is, I'll send you a calendar. And 18 minutes before you light Shabbos candles, I'll send you the blessing. Okay, what about uh, mikvah? I already knew that was it. She says, what's a mikvah? That's right. So I explained it to her and I said, you may want to consider looking into it. I can hook you up with a woman that can go into more details. And, and then I said, but the real question is, why should Hashem give you a child? What are you going to do with that child to make the Jewish people stronger, to deepen the connection with Hashem. And we spoke a little longer and that was the end. She didn't come back to my class. <laughs> Fast forward to the summer. I was running NCSY. I was the assistant director of NCSY Goes to Yeshiva, which is now Camp Sport. Plug for NCSY summer programs. Unbelievable. They have just guys and just girls also. So I get a call and she says, and I can use her name because she's given me permission. She says, Rabbi Ravinsky, yes, this is before cell phones. She said, this is, uh, this is Mrs. Greenfield. I don't know if you remember me. I said, sure I do. My wife wanted to know where I was at one o'clock in the morning that night. o'clock. I said, how are you? She says, I'm in the hospital. I said, what's wrong? She says, I'm holding my son. <laughs> this is 10 months later. <laughs> wow. And I want you she to do the press. Wow. So, and wow. so I, I said, Jeff, I got to fly back to Dallas for the day. <laughs> So he said, go. I guess I wasn't very effective at camp if he let me go. <laughs> but at the Bris, I always give the parents a chance to speak. And again, they're not from. So I give the parents a chance to speak. And she begins by saying, I want to thank Rabbi Ravinsky, who's responsible for this baby. So I said, whoa. <laughs> so when her husband and I... Now your wife knows where you were. In the house, right? anyway. So I, her husband and I and her went into the back room to show how to take care of the baby. I said, listen, you embarrassed me out there, but that's, that's all right. But now can I ask you a question? I said, did you do any of the things we spoke about? And she said, I did them all. And I started attending an Orthodox synagogue. We're not observant, but we started going and started learning and attending classes. Fast forward another 20 years. I'm at an NCSY Shabbaton in Memphis, Tennessee, and they're dedicating Habdal. Usually, for those who don't know, it's a kid who's grown or accomplished despite adversity in their learning or, or kima mitzvos. And they're dedicating and they're talking about this story. And I said, oh, that sounds like a family I know from Dallas. And they announced that it's, you know, I forget her first name, Greenfield, who's not from our region, but from Southern. And it's like, it can't be. So I went up to her and I said, all right, don't get creeped out, you know, because it's easy to an old guy... You from Dallas? Yeah. You have a brother? Yeah. Older brother? Yeah. Did your mother have difficulty having children before he was born? She looks at me and says, how do you know that? I said, get her on the phone now. And now like this girl's like totally creeped out. <laughs> and, 
And so, and all the advisors were standing around like this is like a real Pesach Kron story in the developing. <laughs> anyway, so it turned, the whole family became from. And this girl, she was graduating. She was an artist. She was on her way to Eretz Yisrael. Go to seminary. And you just... And, and that's the ultimate message. We plant seeds. We don't do Kiruv. Anyone who thinks they make someone from is a nar. It's, it's ego. It's stupidity. They're, it's not true. We're shlichim of a Kaddish Baruch Hu. Enjoyed this story? Come again. Bring a friend. Stories to inspire.org.